In the previous video, you've seen how we use the two-phase simplex method to solve a problem, and then at the end of phase one, that problem falls into case two. Here I'm going to talk about uh, what happens if we encounter the other types of cases. So let's see. Let me recap a little bit. At the end of phase one, when we have got the optimal table of phase one, we may have the table that falls into one of these three cases. In the example of the previous video, we've seen that in that case, it falls into case two. Um, in case one, we can see that the W prime value is greater than zero, so strictly greater than zero. It means that we have an invisible linear programming problem. And then in case three, even though the W prime equals zero, you have artificial variable in the basis. So uh, we will see later that how we may proceed if we have case three. So let's start with the example where we have case one at the end of phase one. So here is the example of the LP where we will see that it falls to case one at the end of phase one. Okay, so as usual, what you need to do is uh, transform it into standard form plus S1 for the first constraint minus E2 for the second constraint. Add artificial variables A2 and A3 and then ignore the original objective function. So we are starting phase one at this step. Ignore the original objective function and then replace it with the objective function of phase one, which is minimize W prime a2 plus A3. And then we perform arrows to create a canonical form BFS. So this is the BFS that is uh, already in a canonical form. And then we have also basic variable for each row of the constraint. So now we are ready to start the calculation for phase one. Okay, now let's perform simplex to the table that we've got in the previous slide. In a minimization problem, this is not optimal because you still have variables with positive coefficients in row zero. So you pick one with the most positive coefficient, that is x2, and then you perform ratio test to determine the leaving variable. So you know that this place is the pivot. You perform error or elementary row operation such that now your x2 column looks like this. Now, for a minimization problem, this table on the bottom is already optimal because you don't see any positive coefficient in row zero. However, you see that this W prime value equals six, which is strictly greater than zero. From here, you can draw the conclusion that this problem is infeasible. It is infeasible because at the end of phase one, you obtain an optimal table, but the W prime is greater than zero. Also, you can say in addition, there is an artificial variable with a positive value as the basic variable. In other words, in your optimal solution, you propose something um, that does not exist in the real world. Now let's look at another example where we will see that at the end of phase one for this problem, we will see that uh, the optimal table falls into case three. Same as before, these are the steps that you need to do um, when you try to convert this into a standard form. The problem is already standard because all signs are equality signs and then all variables are already non-negative, so you do not need to do anything at this step. Now you need artificial variables a1, a2, a3, but then for the last constraint, you may use x4 as your basic variable, because x4 only appears in the last row, and it doesn't appear on the second row, on the first row, sorry, on the third row, second row, first row, and it doesn't appear either on row zero. So it's okay to use X4 as the basic variable. That's why we do not have A4 here. And then as usual, we ignore the original objective function when we are starting phase one. Instead, 
we use phase one uh, objective function, which is to minimize the sum of all artificial variables. Notice here that phase one is always minimizing something, even though the original problem says maximize C. So always in the phase one, we minimize the sum of all artificial variables. And then we perform arrows to create a canonical form table. So using this BFS, we are ready to start the simplex method. Because the objective of phase one is minimization. So as usual in the simplex, we will see if there is any variable in the row zero that has a positive coefficient. And then we pick one with the most positive coefficient. Here it's X3 with the most positive coefficient. And then you perform ratio tests such that you obtain that the pivot position is here. It means that X3 will become entering variable and A3 will become the leaving variable. And then you perform arrows such that now the column of X3 looks like this. In the pivot position, it's one. All other position, the value is zero. And then you see that um, this table is already optimal for the minimization. Remember that phase one's objective is minimization. So it's already optimal with the value of W prime equals zero. But then you notice that you have artificial variables in the basis or in other words, you have artificial variables that are basic variables. So this, this means that this case falls into case three. It means that we can go on to phase two, but there are some things that we need to do. So let's see what those things are. So from the previous slide, we see that the optimal table for phase one falls into case three. And the basic variables are a1, a2, x3, and x4. So let's start the phase two. And here are the things that we need to do. First, we drop all artificial variable columns, which are non-basic variable. So here you see that a3 is a non-basic variable in the optimal table of phase one. So we drop the column of uh, a3. It means that we just delete the column and we will not uh, consider that variable anymore in phase two. We also drop any variable from the original problem that has a negative coefficient in row zero. So x1 is a variable in the original problem and then you see it has a negative coefficient in row zero. So we also drop x1. We will not consider this variable when we are doing the phase two computation. And then uh, we will use um, for the table that starts phase two, we will use the original objective function as the row zero, okay? So you see here that um, we don't consider X1 anymore because it is dropped here, right? Remember that we drop X1, so we don't consider X1 anymore. And then we have uh, 10 X2, here becomes minus 10 because we move it to the left hand side for the row zero form and then we have 7x5 it becomes minus 7 here because again we move it to the left hand side we have 14x6 um, and it becomes minus 14 because we move it to the left hand side so that's the row zero from the original objective function and then for the other rows in the phase two table, you simply copy what you have from the original, sorry, from the optimal table of phase one. Now, once you've done that, you need to make sure that the basic variables are still the same with the basic variables of the optimal table of phase one. So you need to make sure that a1, a2, x3, and x4 are still the basic variable when you start the phase two com computation. So here, I think fortunately we have a1, a2, x3 here, and x4, they are still 
basic variable even though we have replaced the objective function with the original objective function. So it means that we can continue to do the simplex uh, calculation as usual. But then remember, if that is not the case, I mean, if this basic variables um, are still not in canonical form, you need to perform error to make sure that uh, these variables are still the basic variables when you start phase two. Okay, now let's perform the simplex algorithm and then um, in phase two, we will use the objective function of the original problem. So the original problem says that this is a maximization problem. So we will do the simplex according to the uh, maximization rule, which means that we need to pick the most negative variable as the entering variable, which is x6. We perform ratio test and then obtain this position should become the pivot. And then we perform error to make the column of x6 have the value of 1 in that pivot position and then 0 in all other positions. And then we look at this table on the bottom and then we see that there is no coefficient in row 0 that is still negative. It means that this BFS or this table is already optimal for maximization case, which is um, the objective of the original problem, maximization. Okay, so we have reached the optimal solution for the problem. So now you should be able to solve a linear programming problem using two-phase simplex method. So you have learned at least three methods, the ordinary simplex algorithm, and then using big M method, and then two-phase simplex method to solve a linear programming problem. Which method you choose depends on the type of uh, constraints that you have. If all constraints are less than or equal to, you may just use the ordinary simplex algorithm. Other than that, you may use big M or two-phase simplex method. And you've also seen that in the two-phase simplex method, it has overcome the disadvantage of the big M method, where in the big M method, you have the character M, which represents a very large positive number. And then um, in reality, when you use a software or something, it's sometimes it's difficult to decide how large M should be. But here in the two-phase method, you see that you don't have such problem because everything is in numbers. You don't have something like the character big M. So that's all for this video. And then we're going to continue to talk about a variable that is called URS or unrestricted in sign. So see you on the next one. Thank you.